Hi, my name is Jonathan Dickstein. I'm an Iyengar yoga teacher in Denver and in Boulder. And this is another video for the Intermountain Iyengar Yoga Association. So today we're going to do some supine version versions of standing poses, which sounds kind of strange off the bat, but it's actually a good variation if there's any physical problems going on in the body, knee problems, ankle problems, hip problems, if the energy is low, some of these asanas can be done during menstruation. And it's also a, a good idea because it allows us to take out some of the balance and exertion that comes in the standing poses to understand some of the, the mechanics and the alignment of those poses themselves. So the first three poses we'll do are three of the lateral poses. These can be done with a number of, of props, but I'm going to keep it pretty simple for this video, so um, just a block will suffice for most of it. <clears throat> I have a block pretty far away from the side of the mat for my back leg in the standing poses or the, in the lateral standing poses. And I'm using the sticky mat so that I don't slide along the floor once I place my legs in. So the first one will be Virabhadrasana 2, warrior pose number 2. It takes a little bit of time to understand the distance, the block has to be away, where the mat has to be, and so on. But I place my foot up on this block, it could be even higher, and I'm going to scoot myself close to the wall to make this 90 degree shape in the front leg that is characteristic of Virabhadrasana 1, uh, Virabhadrasana 2 and Virabhadrasana 1. I lie flat, and one of the benefits now of having a floor is that the tailbone and the back of the skull are in alignment, as should be the case in the pose. There's an immediate opening of this inner groin, and I can actually lay my arm on the inner thigh to coax that, that opening of the inner groin. The other hand can even rest on the back thigh to also encourage its, its descent uh, towards the floor. What also happens in this opening is the, the lower back tends to push, as is often the case in Virabhadrasana too, but now that gravity is working with me, I can relax here for a few minutes, exhale, and let the abdominal region descend towards the spine and let the lower back neutralize. And then, obviously, like the pose itself, eventually I can take the arms out to the side mimicking the position of the arms as well. Now from here, we'll just stay on one side for these poses, we'll do Uttita Trikonasana, which is now Supta Trikonasana. So lying down triangle pose, but it's standing version in the, in the lying down position. I'm going to extend the forward leg, and then I have to travel a bit, using my shoulders, using my head, and bring myself as close to this leg as possible. I lay the back of the hand on the inner shin bone and top of the arm away like Trikonasana. You can even turn the head here, it's quite natural. Same idea, focusing on the external rotation of the leg, opening of this groin, but now also the hamstring has a challenge as well. Now from here, I'll go right to Uttita Parashvakanasana. So, side angle pose in the supine position. I bend this leg. Usually the distance is pretty close. I can walk it out a little bit if I like to make sure the 90 degree angle is intact. And here it's quite nice as I reach my arm over and hold the shin. And I can really use my arm here now to press this leg down to the floor. You may have noticed in Virabhadrasana too, the knee tends to gravitate off the floor a little. Here I can really use this arm to create the, the shape that's necessary in Uttita Parshvakanasana, where the outer knee is in line with the outer thigh. Top arm overhead, find the lateral stretch, Uttita Parshvakanasana. Head can turn or head towards the ceiling, whatever is comfortable. This is meant to be a, a, a comfortable experience. Now I release, and now coming out of the lateral position, Virabhadrasana 1, Warrior 1. So the legs pretty much stay as 
they are, but I'm gonna swivel the pelvis, turn the back foot, and come up for a moment. Same idea. Now, the back leg is not nearly gonna rotate internally enough as it would in the standing version, so it's okay if the leg remains in its, in its quasi parshvakanasana shape. But <clears throat> the general idea is still here about bringing this left hip uh, forward. Then I turn, lie down flat, and take the arms all the way overhead in this Urdhva Namaskar position. Then the last pose here, Paravritta Parshva Kanasana. Paravritta Parshva Kanasana. So side angle pose, twisting. And I'll show it once without a prop and once with, with a prop. I lift up. <clears throat> put my hands under my shoulders, inhale, exhale, turn, and really twist as I would for the standing version and try to bring the chest closer to the floor. Now this is a bit more strenuous. This position, Paravritta Parshva Kanasana, even Virabhadrasana 1, I would not recommend for those during menstruation. The other three would be okay. Um, but this is quite strenuous regardless, using the arms and getting this twist to happen. Another option, another option is to take the bolster. This is a, a little bit more supportive, relaxing experience. Put it right next to the hip horizontally. I do the same action, I twist, but then I lay my body down on the bolster and head on the floor. The head can be supported by an additional blanket if it doesn't touch. And then back up. And release the legs, and that would be one side. You can do a number of the poses on one side and then do them all on the other side. You can go back and forth. Um, it doesn't matter. Either way would have a different effect. <clears throat> now the last variation requires uh, using a belt and or the last posture using a belt and the rope wall or something you could fashion at home that would mimic the, ro the rope wall. So the last pose we're going to do is Parshvottanasana in the supine position at the rope wall. Like I said, this is the full rope wall, but you can attach a belt and just have a second belt on hand, and that would completely work for this pose. Before going to Parshvottanasana, we'll do Sutta Parimashtasana with the rope, which is basically the supine version of Uttita Hasta Paramushtasana, standing up holding the big toe pose. So I put the back of my ankle in the, in the rope and align myself with that, with that rope itself. The bottom leg is extended, top leg is extended obviously. And then to intensify the stretch, I can press into the wall and slide a bit away. This is why it's essential not to be on a sticky mat here, even though you can have a, a blanket down if that, if that feels better. Once I go to the desired position, I can either keep my hands on the wall or relax the arms overhead or even to the sides. So that's a quite common use of the rope. To change it a little bit and make it to supine partial tanasana, I take a belt and it's fastened, but with the largest loop possible. I put it around the bottom leg foot, and then over the lifted leg thigh. And I'll start with it here, but eventually I'm going to move this. I take the rope again, like Sukta Paramushtasana, extend the top leg fully, but now I'm going to slide this bell up and place it just below the knee. So in space, it's below the knee, anatomically above the knee. The bottom leg extends fully and will suspend at this angle. So now the legs are much more like in partial tanasana. Not only that, 
but the placement of the belt really helps to fully extend this knee, which is one of the biggest problems for the front leg in partial tanasana. I can stay here for a, a bit of time, and then just like Sutta Padangusthasana, I can use the wall and take myself a little further away from the wall and bring the lifted leg towards myself. Same idea, the arms can stay here, overhead, or out to the sides. And I can release both legs. And come up. So all of these poses, the lateral poses, Virabhadrasana 1, Paravritta Parshvakanasana, and now Supine Parshvotanasana, um, are excellent variations to do to kind of work on those subtleties of the poses, or at times when maybe just the energy isn't there to do them on the feet, or if there's some uh, physical condition that's limiting them. So once again, thank you for watching, and thank you for supporting your local Iyengar Yoga Association.